Bro, Matias is a come forward pressure fighter who is relentless in his pursuit of knocking his opponents out. Sporting a 100% KO rate of 20 wins, 20 knockouts, after avenging his only loss and defeating the number one and number three guys, is Sabril the best and most feared fighter at the 140 pound division? Although Devin Haney and Teofimo Lopez reign as champions in the division as well. We'll take a deep dive into this film study to see is he going to be destined to be king of the 140 pound division. The heavy handed orthodox Puerto Rican fighter relies on a simple but tough game plan. Outwork your opponent with relentless pressure and punches. Wear him down, then knock him out. A strategy that has worked for him 20 out of 21 times. Does he possess the skills that it'll take for him to take on the elite competition in the division? Is the question we plan to answer in this film study. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Shabro Matias is a bit of a slow starter. Early in his fights, his opponents usually get the best of him. It's not until his opponents gas out that he takes over and overwhelms them. Now let's flash back to the first two rounds of Matias versus Ergashev. Ergashev at full energy was able to keep the distance with his jab, an active lead hand, and a combination of punching and bunches and changing the angles, taking advantage of the holes in Matias' footwork. Early on into fights, when Matias' opponents has energy to keep him at bay and keep him at mid-range, he'll trade jabs with you. But overall, the jab is not in his game plan as much as other fighters because he wants to close the distance and he wants to fight at a mid-range. So the jab is not as conducive to his game plan as it might be for other fighters. Later on in the fight, if Matias' opponents gas out and they can't keep up with their jab, he'll abandon his jab as well and make it a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder inside fight. This is the style fight he's looking for. For footwork, I gave him a C. He cuts off the ring pretty good, but against southpaws, he loses the lead foot battle. Against this fighter, he was losing the lead foot battle early on, but was able to make the adjustments down the line 
just like he did in the Ergashev fight. For head movement, I give him a C because he'll duck punches that you can blatantly see, but when he punches, he never moves his head off the line. For power, I gave him a B. It's not the elite one punch knockout power, but it's that consistent beat the crap out you over and over till you quit on the stool type of power. That power that EJ possessed. For mid-range game, I gave him a C for average. Anybody with a good to elite mid-range game could beat him at this. I gave his inside game a B. It's pretty good, but not elite, but far better than many of the fighters today. It seems to be inside fighting is a lost art nowadays. For durability, I give him a B, but in question. He shows the ability to recover when hurt, and he shows the ability to walk through some big shots. But he hasn't faced any elite competition yet. A lot of these guys were C-level, and some of them um, F-level guys that he's done this against. For IQ, I give him a C for average. He doesn't show me any high-level intelligent moves in there. Or high level thinking in there um we don't know yet because he hasn't been up against any elite competition or anybody with extreme high boxing iq so until then that's still in question um as far as his hand speed that's still in question too i give him a b but in question um it seems to be fast but also he hasn't faced any elite competition yet overall I give Sabril Matias a B for a pretty good fighter. Until he faces the elite competition, we don't know if he's on that level. He doesn't display the skill set yet, but we'll see. My personal belief is when you face the elite competition, his defense will be his downfall. You won't be able to take that much punishment at that level. Nobody can. So you have to move your head, you have to move your feet, you have to get your head off the line. And I think that's the difference between a B fighter and an A, an elite fighter. So how does he do against these elite fighters, you say? Against Devin and Tiafimo? One thing that won't work for him is they won't gas out. At that elite level, those guys have elite conditioning and they will not gas out. I believe Tio has enough power and pop to hurt him and keep him off of him. Devin, that's, his power still is in question, but I believe he has enough speed, enough agility that he can make this fight, if it happens, look somewhat like the Regis fight, where Regis just can't get to him. He's just much too slow. The angles keep changing and the hands keep coming. But as of right now, that's how I think either one of those fights go. So that's it for the Sabrina Matias film study. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Drop down in the comment box. Let me know what you think. I'm out.
You're now tuned into the TNA Sports Network, the number one place for unbiased boxing news, fight predictions, fight breakdowns, and film studies. Make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button on the way out if you want to show love to the channel.